How long has the uh, Logan Iris Society been around, Brian? Well, actually, we're entering our 25th year. Uh, there is an overall society for Utah, and uh, we're an affiliate of the Utah Iris Society. And every year we have uh, a flower show, which which just happened, and coming up this next weekend we have a garden tour of Iris, and uh, so we're looking forward to having a, a great year. Very nice, and you've been a part of it for how long? Well, I started about six years ago. I saw it advertised um, on a community calendar, and I thought, I love Iris, so I walked across the street and I got Shanghai onto the board. So we're always looking for new people to join and be a part of it because it's a great way to, to get closer and, and understand how Iris really grow and, and, uh, and work in the Valley. Very good. And you've just uh, been recently released as president? Yeah, I'm vice president again. So in two years I get to be president again. Um, there are six of us on the board and we probably have about 30 active members in the Valley. And um, the, the one thing about being an active member is you can bring your own iris as long as you know what the name is of the, of the cultivar and bring it to the, to the show. But we do things all throughout the year. We've got um, like a, a digging demonstration that will happen in July. We'll have uh, club meetings about quarterly. And uh, for the show that we had last weekend, we had quite a display of various um, arrangements and most of these are not named varieties like that was a historic one that we were just looking at but they're just fabulous arrangements and then in addition we also had individual mostly tall bearded varieties that were shown uh, at at the show so there's a little bit of a, a lupin with dusky challenger um, and you, so if you want to enter the show you don't have to be a member of the club uh, and if you don't know the name of your iris, you can just bring them uh, the arrangement to the show and fill out the form. Very nice. Uh, there's some beautiful varieties in here, but one thing that uh, I think a lot of gardeners don't realize is that the uh, iris will bloom for longer than just in the spring. That black one was, was gorgeous. That's probably um, out of the dark or one like that one. I love those black ones. Yeah. Uh, you have all various different varieties. Mostly what we're seeing right here are tall bearded and those are what people think of as funeral flowers but I don't like that title because they they keep blooming. Mine peak bloom season is right now and I'll have blooms for about another 10 days to two weeks before they're, they're finally all gone and even within tall bearded you have early blooming varieties and late blooming varieties I've got one that's called last chance and I it's budded but I still don't see any color on it so it's gonna be around for a while uh, then you have ones like spuria irises uh, those who think they have Japanese iris Japanese do not grow in the state of Utah very well well. Oh, that's that was parting glances, that last one. Um, they don't grow very well here. And so what you've probably got are Siberian iris. But in addition to Siberian, you have Spuria iris. And they come on two to three weeks after the tall bearded. They're somewhat similar to the Siberian, but uh, they have some really different colors. And oh, that's decadence. That's one of my favorite. Uh, yeah, that was really pretty. Really pretty. So after they're done blooming, is that kind of when you want to propagate them and, and spread it and, and separate and divide? Actually, you want to wait until July. Um, end of July is, is a really good time. The Iris Society has a sale on July 28th. It'll be at the Logan Library from 7 to 8.30 p.m. And you can pick up a, a lot of the varieties that, that if you went to the show, uh, you can have those there, and they're usually between three and five dollars. The money all goes back to the society, and it's a great way to get named varieties that you know grow really well in the Logan, Utah area, and you can have them in your own garden. The, the f one thing I would say is to make sure that when you divide the iris, look at the rhizome. That's the root part, and a rhizome that has blossomed will never blossom again but it sends out little side shoots and you want to find the largest side shoot that, that has not bloomed and you can tell on the end right. whether it has bloomed or not put that in the ground but don't cover it just leave the top of the the rhizome just kind of barely peeking out of the soil uh, use some bone meal when you're planting it that'll really get it going right right I was gonna I was gonna ask about fertilizer what yeah. what kind of fertilizer do they like they don't like nitrogen I mean they'll take it but it tends to promote too much growth too fast and you end up with diseases that can get into them okay. so just a little bit of bone meal in the hole plant it in there keep it well watered until it's established and next year you should have at least one stock Very 
Very nice. Well, we, we love iris here at Anderson Seed, and we usually have a lot of different varieties to choose from, but nothing like what the Iris Society has, and so you guys do. We can change you, that. You do a great job. You do a great <laughs> job and, uh, and provide a lot of information for the community and uh, provide an opportunity for iris lovers to, to participate and, and learn some more as well, too. So, Brian, thank you so much. You're welcome, Mark.